Hey, everybody, Wendy Sellers here, the HR lady. I am here today with a, a superstar, strategic HR superstar, Amy Michaels. Hey, Amy, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So I wanted to let our listeners know a little bit about you that literally on your LinkedIn profile, it says strategic HR superhero, which I love because these days, anybody in HR, it needs to be a superhero and needs to be able to bend and do everything because we do so much more than HR. So tell our listeners a little bit about uh, yourself and how you got where you are right now. Yeah, so I have been in HR for a number of years, and uh, over the past few years, I've transitioned into consulting, uh, working primarily with small businesses and startups, uh, and I really love working in that space. It's more intimate, um, and I feel like I have more of an impact than I ever did in my corporate days because uh, in the corporate world, there's so many people that uh, are able to input their opinion on things and don't always take into consideration the importance um, that HR plays and allowing them to have a seat at the table. Um, but then they always come running to HR when uh, the things that we advise them about end up playing <laughs> out and then they need our help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 interesting. That's kind of how I started with um, as an HR consultant, too. And I still do work with small businesses. But I, I agree with your assessment, like startups and small businesses. I say if you have one employee, you need HR tools, at least yeah. you don't need an HR person, but you need tools, whether it's a consultant, whether it's, you know, advisory, whatever it is. But you still need policies. You need job descriptions. You need handbooks. You need advice and education on the law. Hello. One employee, yes. you need to follow the law. And, you know, a, a lot of startups just don't think about that because they're like, oh, I'm just going to hire everyone who's passionate about what we do. It's like, yeah, passion only gets you so far, man. <laughs> and passion may sometimes lead you into court as well because you forgot yes. to, you know, pay them for overtime or, you know, you accidentally or intentionally or unconsciously said something that is discriminatory. And now now mm -hmm. you're in hot water. And folks that are listening, I know most of our listeners are HR people, but, you know, talk about this to people who are, who are starting their own companies to say, hey, you need to get your act together and, and at a minimum have a handbook. It doesn't need to be a 700 pound hand, page handbook. It could be a 10 page handbook that just, you know, uh, links out all the laws so people could read them on their own, but it says we comply with the laws. Here's our culture. Here's our values. Here's how we're going to do X, Y, Z. And this is you're going to you're going to comply, employee one. And if you don't, here's the consequences. Amy, wouldn't that be so much better? It would be. And uh, I just had a, a company recently that I consult with come to me because they blew up during the pandemic. They do not have an employee handbook. They have been in business almost three years now, and they have employees in four different states. Oh, and now they're in hot water. So, yep, it could is. Not I agree think, more with the handbook. I think so many um, <laughs> small businesses say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, we'll get to that later." Yeah, 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 we'll get to that later, and then. Um, something happens, whether it's a giant expansion that was unintentional because of, say, in this mm -hmm. case, the pandemic, or they just grew so fast because of demand for their service. They were like, we'll get to that later. We'll get to that later. So folks that are listening, please get yourself a handbook. I actually have one for sale on my website and it's been vetted by an attorney in the state of Florida. And there's notes all over it of what you need to do before you, you finalize this handbook. And that is including um, getting a lawyer of your own to look it over, but it'll be cheaper to review it than have them write the whole thing. So, hey, I love the name of your company. What is the name of your company? Wolfpack HR. I love it because we do need to be of a pack, right? We need to say yes. we're all in this together. <laughs> Please stop pushing us out the door. So, you know, we just got into 2024. We made it. Woo! Yay. But that also means 2024 is ahead of us. And Holy moly, Amy, so many laws are changing. So many things are just uh, constantly changing. I would say in the past, you know, five or six years with, with un you know, uh, um, hourly, overtime, mm -hmm. you name it, all these benefits that 
states just said, I'm sick of waiting for the feds to do something. We're going to create yes. PTO policies for our for our state and any employee that works in the state. So there's a lot of things going on. Um, I really encourage everyone to follow uh, a HR podcast, YouTube, whatever, whether it's mine or others, so that you could kind of learn a little bit. But let's talk about, you know, briefly, what are your, you know, um, educated guesses and predictions from 2024 and beyond about where we're going to be with like employee turnover, employee retention, because I have my own thoughts too. join us on part two of this series to hear more. Oh.